Okay, welcome everyone to our class tonight. We are, we've themed tonight's class as winter warmers for obvious reasons. We've just come into winter and we're all wanting to cook some new things in our Thermomixers. Now, there's a few consultants presenting tonight. We'll, I'll get them all to introduce themselves to you. Uh, but we've each chosen what we wanted to share. So we've chosen some of our favorite um, winter dishes and tips with you all. My name's Laura Jacobson. Um, I'm from the Sydney Hills area. And um, well, the other consultants tonight are as well. This is our team here we have here. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the chat. Yeah, so if you have questions um, as you go tonight, please feel free to put them into the chat. One of us will answer them. One of the, you don't need to come off the microphone. You can just sit back, relax and watch tonight while we present. Um, and it's best if you have your view on speaker view, which is the default with Zoom. But if you can see lots of little boxes, um, see where you can change the view to be speaker view so that you can see the Thermomix and what we're sharing a lot bigger. Um, so that's my one tip before we get started. So to start us off tonight, I'm going to pass over to the lovely Yolanda and she is going to share her recipe with us. Hey, hello everyone. I'm Yolanda Baker. I've been a Thermomix consultant for oh, about four years. Um, love it, love sharing food and cooking with people, love trying new recipes and love everything that I make in the Thermomix. So tonight I'm going to make with you um, a fresh tomato tart. It's not specifically a wintry thing, but it is a really nice kind of weekend dish to treat yourself or something to serve as an entree. It's super fast to make. When I first saw it, I thought it would be a bit tricky, but it was surprisingly good and surprisingly fast. So let's make it together tonight. Fresh tomato tart from Cookie Doo. So we need to preheat our oven, which I have done. I'm hoping you can see my Thermomix. I'll just tilt my screen down a bit better. Laura, you can let me know if you can't see properly. What's going on? Okay, so I've got a baking tray ready. I'm gonna pop some plain flour, 250 grams, into my Thermomix. I do love that I can weigh as I go into the TM6 and that it weighs down to one gram of accuracy. I think that's really quite awesome. I must admit, um, since we've all been at home more, I've been baking quite a bit and I've been enjoying trying new things. So there's that. And then in goes some unsalted butter, just um, chopped into cubes. There we go, exactly, that's nice. Put the measuring cap into the mixing bowl, pop it on top like that. And we're just going to mix for um, speed four, just for a couple of seconds. Nice quick mix. So after four seconds, it's just rub that butter through like breadcrumbs. That step we used to do once upon a time with a bowl in our hands. Now we're going to add just a little bit of water, 40 grams. When you're making a dough, be careful to use the right amount of water with the right amount of flour. You don't want your, dry, your dough too dry or too wet. That can make a difference with baking. With a lot of other recipes, you can add lib a bit, but with doughs and cakes, try and be accurate with your flour and your water. There we go. So now we want one tablespoon of lemon juice, which I have sitting alongside here. Nice, freshly squeezed lemon juice. and then two pinches of salt. And we hit next, one egg yolk. I've cracked that in advance just to make it a bit faster for tonight. And once again, pop the measuring cap on, put our mixing bowl lid. And we're going to down speed four again, just for 10 seconds to combine everything. So 
So when your dough comes out, it's quite crumbly like that. Um, we're just going to pop it onto a work surface. I'm going to use a thermomat. These are awesome for doing bread and dough work. Your dough doesn't stick to it. You can roll things out nicely on it. And it's um, really helpful if you're baking breads, doughs, biscuits, scrolls, that sort of thing. So I'll just tip that mix out and flatten it into an approximate disc. We want it eventually about 30 centimetres. You can hear everything okay, Laura? Yep, looking good, I can hear you fine, you're doing well. <laughs> kind of weird, like I'm just talking to myself in the kitchen here. I know, we're all here watching. Well, it's good if I hear your voice every now and then, I know I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Okay, next thing I want to do is roll it out between some baking paper. I'm going to do it on my thermomat. I don't know if you can actually see this with the angle I've got my screen at. Anyway, I'm just rolling it out. I want it to be about three millimetres thick, roughly, and about 30 centimetres approximately. We don't need to be too exact with the size. It's a nice, easy dough to roll out. And what I love about this one, there's no kneading and there's no resting of the dough. So if you decide short notice, hey, I'm going to make that, it's quite quick to produce. And I always find I've got flour and eggs and butter in the house. It's just one of those staples that you always have. So I'm actually making it a bit bigger than 30 centimetres because we're going to roll the sides up. So there I am, I've rolled my dough. Next thing we're going to do is just leave that now. I'm going to transfer it onto a baking tray. So I can just flip that over on my mat and then I'll just peel the mat off the back. Oh, I don't know if you can see how easy that's coming. See, this is why I love the Thermanat. Dough doesn't stick. I can transfer it nicely like that. Makes my life easy. Those Thermanats, they are a host reward and you can also buy them in the mix shop. All right, we've done that. Next thing we're going to do is take the paper off, which I've done. Now we're going to get a fresh bowl. This is the advantage of having a second bowl. I don't have to wait to wash up the other one. I can just pop it straight in. And I'm going to add one garlic clove. I've got a nice big fat one. Then I'm going to add some spring onions, but I've chopped up some shallots, just roughly chopped and some shallots, shallots and also um, some fresh chives. So that's gonna be nice and oniony in our mix. Okay, lid back on. And just, you know, speed seven for three seconds is enough to chop those herbs. All right, give them a quick scrape down. Actually, I'm gonna show you this. That's how great it is, three seconds, sorry, yeah, three seconds, speed seven. I don't know if you can see, but it's really nicely chopped. Swipe down the sides. With my spatula. And then I'm gonna add some smooth ricotta cheese. So 250 grams of that. More. There we go. And next we're going to add just a little bit of sour cream, just 40 grams. Oh well, 10 grams over. I'm not worried about that. It's only for the filling. And then one egg. If I'd been organised, I would have had that out earlier, but anyway. One egg. Two pinches of black pepper. And a little bit of sea salt, about half a teaspoon is good for this. 
just to give it a bit of flavor. Works nicely with the shallots and the ricotta. Measuring cap into the mixing bowl lid. I love guided cooking. Speed four now for five seconds. Okay, so this is our filling that we're going to put into the middle of this pastry that we've just made. It's just a beautiful filling, pardon me, with the chives. That little bit of egg's gonna help it to set. I might pour it onto the dough and I think you'll be able to see it better that way. Super quick filling to make. First time I made this, I thought, oh, not too many ingredients in there. But I baked it and we, um, we really enjoyed it. I made it twice in one week, it was so good. That's always a good sign, isn't it? All right, so there's my filling. Next thing I need to do is quickly lift the border up and over. And the reason for that is that the filling's quite runny. I don't know if you can see, it's just sitting in the middle there. So we're just going to lift the border of the pastry just up and over, just so we can keep that filling in there nicely. A bit like a galette when you make a galette pie. It's always trickier doing this when people are watching you and you do it by yourself at home, it's easier. <laughs> no stress, no pressure. You're doing way better than what I would do. You're doing well. <laughs> great. It is harder when you know people are watching you. I know, it's the pressure. It's sort of rush it, which you shouldn't do. But well, You don't need to rush it for us. I'm just conscious that there's lots of dishes to be prepared and I don't want to hog the, the whole class. <laughs> but anyway, a bit rustic is okay. If your pastry breaks a bit, that doesn't matter either. Probably could have rolled mine out even a bit thinner, but once again, I was kind of rushing a little bit. But that's okay. I'm quite happy with that looking a bit rustic. That's no problem. It's going to make it look nice when it's finished. Okay, next thing we're going to do. I've got these gorgeous winter tomatoes. I've got all different colours. The tomatoes, the golden ones, the reds and the oranges. And we're going to put about 100 grams of those into this mix. Just scatter them so they look pretty. And we're going to add some more on top after it's baked. So don't use them all, you want to use about half. I might actually resort to using my fingers because I think that will be easier. Okay, so they're on there ready to go. We can season with a bit of extra salt and pepper. I don't want to add more salt, but I will add just a, a bit more cracked black pepper because I think it's nice with it. And what I do have um, afterwards, we'll just top it with some shallots. Now what's going to happen, it's going to go, I'm supposed to brush the rim just with some um, beaten egg, and then I'm going to pop it in the oven just for 20, 25 minutes. So um, I'll let you know when it's done. Thank you so much. Very well done, looks great. And I forgot to mention earlier for everyone watching, I am gonna be sending out the links to the recipes tomorrow. So don't feel like you need to be there taking notes, just relax and enjoy um, watching um, what we're doing here. And um, hopefully you learn some tips tonight. We're gonna to go over to Jen now. Jen's gonna share with us some winter warming desserts, but one of them needs to get on cooking. So that's why we're doing that first. Um, here she is. Wait, uh, Jen, we can't hear you. Hey everybody, I'm Jen. How are you all? Um, thanks for joining us tonight and I'm very excited to be cooking for you. Um, I've got new lights in my kitchen so you'll be able to see me, which is really lovely. So tonight I'm doing two things. I'm doing a master hot chocolate 
which is a really nice um, thing that we can do. It's a little bit gourmet and we can do it for the kids or just treat ourselves at this time of the year. And I'm also going to do ginger honey cakes, um, with ginger and honey cakes with a slice of mandarin. So um, I'll get cracking into that. Now you don't need to watch me. You can just watch the thermo screen. So I'll bring that over to here. Now for the uh, hot chocolate, this is actually what I've done. So I've just chopped up two, or you could do three. So this is where you'll work out what works for your family. But I've chopped up, well, sorry, this is a serving for one. Um, but I've actually just chopped up two fun-sized Mars bars. So they come in those, you know, the pack of 12 fun-sized Mars bar packs. Um, also, this recipe that I'm doing, I'm going to be doing it in manual mode. So I'm going to be going through setting the time, the temperature and the speed. And this recipe that Laura will email out to you tomorrow actually comes from uh, our recipe community. So there's about, I think there's about 7,000 recipes on recipe community. So that's recipecommunity.com. But as, as I said, that link to this hot chocolate. And then once you're in that link, you'll be able to go and view the recipe community. So that was where we all kind of shared recipes. Um, some of them are untested and some of them are tested, but people contribute. Uh, they tweak family favorites and, and send them to the recipe community. I've, um, and a lot of us consultants have included recipes on the recipe com community as well. So that's where we functioned and operated from and shared our love of our food um, before Cookie Doo came in. But our, so that means this um, recipe can actually be done on the TM31, the TM5 or the TM6. So I'll get into it. It's a lovely quick and easy one. So two or three fun size Mars bars chopped up um, per person, I guess, that's how it is. I generally just make this for, there's only two of us in this house that like hot chocolate, everyone else likes coffee. Uh, so what happens here, we're just going to, and I've just chopped them into little chunks. Can everybody see that? So one of those little bars just maybe into thirds. So I'm just gonna pop those in, and then I'm going to pop in 350 grams. So on the TM6, um, we just tap the scales and 350 grams of milk. Now you can use light, white, skim milk, full cream milk, uh, whatever milk you like. I do, I've done a bit of research here and also um, coconut milk, almond milk, or any of your milk alternatives apparently works really nicely as well. So about 350 mils of milk and all we do is put the lid on and then we are going to just close off our scales Swipe back over to our time. So always setting our time first. So four minutes. So I'll just quickly, oh, hang on. I did the wrong thing there. I bumped it with my, so setting the time, four minutes, 80 degrees. So, which is not going to burn your milk and also be a really nice temperature to drink. And then we're just going to go speed one. So that is there. So that's going to go along. So now I'm just going to do something slightly naughty and just move my Thermomix whilst it's going, but it's not going flat out or anything like that. And that's just going to heat up there. Now I'll get the other TM6 because as a consultant, I was lucky enough to earn my second Thermomix TM6. So now can everybody see that? Is that coming up okay, Laura, on the screen? Yeah. So honey cakes, ginger honey cakes. And again, I've stored that in um, today's cook today and I'm just going to hit start cooking. So what I've done, just to see things along, I've got the Varoma here. And in my Varoma, I have got a rectangle one of these, which is our silicon um, cupcake moulds or muffin moulds. Now you can buy these on the mix shop. They're $14.95. Now I've, what I've done though, because we're only making six tonight, I've got the rectangle one. And what I've done, I've sliced a mandarin into, uh, I use two mandarins actually, because I like my slices to be a little bit thicker, but I've just lightly greased these uh, with a little bit of vegetable oil. And then I've popped in a mandarin slice probably about half a centimetre thick. You could go probably a little bit less. Now, the recipe actually says get one um, mandarin and cut it in six. So 
slices, but mine were a little bit on the smaller side, but they fit perfectly. And then I've drizzled, as you go through the recipe, it says to drizzle honey, a teaspoon of honey into each one of those little cupcake molds. Now I've set that up on the, if I get a good shot there, on the Varoma lid. So that's the Varoma tray and that's going to sit in our Varoma like that and these are going to be steamed. So that's that little bit of prep going on there. All right, so we've already done the ramekins and what I've got here prepared is sliced ginger. Now we know, everybody knows ginger's got lovely healing qualities, antioxidant, great um, you know, for nausea, upset tummy, and just a really yummy winter spice. So in goes um, 10 grams. Now, I was only saying to the ladies, I made this as a practice last night and we absolutely loved it. And I upped a little bit of the ginger going in for tonight. Now we've got 70 grams of raw sugar going in. So I've pre-weighed, but we'll just dump that in there like so. You would just tip straight from your packet, hitting next and putting the measuring cup and lid on. And off we go. So there may be a little bit of noise next. Three seconds and we're just going to spin that to speed nine. And that's going to mill down our sugar. Okay, so that's done. Now this does require two little chops, but I'll just give you a look. And this smell, it's a shame it's not smell-o-vision. This absolutely smells divine. So that ginger has chopped up beautifully. It just wants us to scrape down the sides of the mixing bowl and just give that a second hit. And put the lid back on, off we go again, and another quick chop. There we go. All right, tapping next. And that one's done. Now we're going to add in some butter, 90 grams of butter. Now I've just cubed that. In winter, just get it out a little, if you store it in the fridge, just bring it out a little bit earlier um, than you need it, just so it softens. And I've just diced that butter. So in goes, I'll just tear those scales off, butter. Now, the other thing I love about this recipe is that mandarins are in season. So keeping things, um, you know, affordable and everything, we want to make sure that's the hot chocolate finished. We want to make sure that we are using in season produce. So butter's gone in, popping the lid back on the thermi, tapping next. And this time, this is going to mix for a minute and a half. So whilst that's happening there, I'm going to carefully move the Thermomix and bring my hot chocolate back. Now all I'm going to do now, is this is beautifully dissolved in that uh, the, the chocolate has all melted. So I'm now just going to chop, uh, sorry, for five seconds. So setting the timer for five seconds, speed seven. And this is just going to blitz our drink up to make it lovely and frothy. So off it goes. Sounds like it's taken off like a rocket. And stop. And then I will serve that. I've already prepared this lovely little tray. Now, everybody that knows me knows I love Disneyland. So I've actually got this really cute Mickey Mouse little cookie tra cookie cup tray. And in we go, our lovely hot chocolate. Now, that, let me tell you, you can see that there. That's perfect for everybody to enjoy. Can you see how that's got? Does that show up, that nice frothy, I guess, yeah, like a beer, nice frothy head on it. So there we go. And you can serve that with a few little baby marshmallows on top would be really pretty. And I've also chopped up some extra chocolate there. So how does that look, everybody? All right. Now, I'll squizzle that out of the road and bring the other Thermomix back. Okay. 
So, so whilst, if you weren't at home cooking, can, how, do we, how do we look in there? Okay, so if you weren't doing, um, if you, to save time, I always say read the recipe. Go through your recipe on Cookie Do, and of course you can pre-prep like I did here. But what that was saying here is saying, meanwhile, whilst, the, whilst that minute and a half, I mean, we went over to the hot chocolate, but whilst the, your butter and sugar is creaming, you would normally set up your Varoma like so. But that's been done. So that was just drizzling in a teaspoon of honey. Now, I just need to give Bilpin our lovely local honey from the Hawkesbury, um, Bilpin honey. So I travelled up there just after the bushfires actually and bought this beautiful um, Bilpin bush honey. So wherever you can, please... Um, you know, in our area, we're very fortunate. We've got lovely um, mandarin farms, Ford's farm, and we've also got beautiful honey, uh, local produce around the area. So look out for it where you can. All right, so that's been done. And we tap next. And what we're going to add in now, so I'll show you the butter and sugar cream. That's like that. We're going to chuck in two medium eggs. Then we are going to put the lid back on our Thermomix and tap next and just whip those up. Speed three for 30 seconds. Bringing over my other little bits and pieces. And just to give you an idea, that's kind of the thickness that I cut those mandarines. So just thought I'd show you that. All right, and we've got seven seconds on that to go. So, yeah, some really good things, um, you know, with the honey. Honey's got the antibacterial um, help, you know, you, when you were little, your mum would tell you to take a teaspoon of honey. So we've got those kind of things going into these. So this is really, I mean, this is still health food. This is dessert, but it's health food. We are going to shake in now 90 grams of plain flour. We are also then tapping next and 30 grams of mandarin juice. Now, I just cut one mandarin in half and just juiced it on a little uh, Tupperware juicer there. So 30 grams of mandarin juice going in. And then next, teaspoon of baking powder going in. Lid going back on. Where did I put you? Up here. Tapping next. And we've just got 20 seconds on the clock there. So, yeah, so this is, um, as I said, this is a really quick and easy one. Now, we actually still have yesterday's, last night's ones I actually made um, in little other little silicon moulds because I didn't want to dirty up these ones. Um, these are fantastic. Microwave them to warm them up if you, if you don't get through them all. Um, they're still very delicious the next day, but they also freeze really well. So you can make these ahead um, of your guest coming or just make them ahead and sit them aside. So what I'll do now is all I'm going to do is it just says hand finish off, and I'm just using my other spatula, hand finish off this uh, batter. And I'll just show you what that looks like. Now, that's all done in there. So there's just a little bit of the um, flour didn't get mixed in. So it just tells you to finish mixing by hand. Now, I've used a regular spatula. You should probably use the Thermomix one. And all I'm going to do now is just divide this mixture in six, dollop it into the uh, Varoma tray. So I'll just do one just to show you. And it just sits up on top of your mandarin slice so it'll just look like that and then we are going to put 500 uh, mils of water in back into our thermomix bowl so that will go back into here and then we'll just follow through so it says divide the mixture between the ramekins cover them with some uh, cling film now i didn't do that last night i just uh, steamed them up normally but i think it just stops the water or the condensation dripping down but it, it really doesn't matter if you don't want to use that you don't have to i just didn't bother you would clean and dry the mixing bowl and then just add in your 500 grams of water and then put your verona on top so for anybody that's new to thermomix i'll show you what that looks like 
So your Varoma is your steamer. Now in our Varoma normally we would steam sticky date puddings, we can steam veggies, everything. Let's, can you see how that looks? So that's where it sits, that's where your cakes will sit. They will steam up for 30 minutes and then at the end of this time now I'll show you what that looks like. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks, Jen. Looking good. Um, yeah, I love steaming desserts in the Varoma instead of turning the oven on. I think it's really awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to put on a little video of Alex that Alex made earlier for us just because of the cooking class. We're trying to like cram as many recipes as we can in a short space of time. Um, and so this is just a quick way of us being able to do that. So here's Alex, one of the consultants in our team um sharing a recipe for us this is from our book called cooking for me and youth which was specifically designed for couples and singles um, to have smaller portions of um, dishes cooked i'm just pressing the share button all right hopefully you can all see that now and here's alex so firstly we need to grease a round oven proof dish um, i've got my round one set for this evening so I've got a rectangular dish over there for now and we're going to throw in our cheese so as you can see I'm just going to tear the scales and I have already pre-chopped this so it's not going to be oh magical she has 30 grams of cheese I mean I've already done that but as we go along you can see that it's now going to tell me to add my mozzarella put that guy in a little bit more but who says no to a bit of extra cheese and the parmesan so you put that in there and four seconds we're just going to grate that that into a bowl which I have here and we'll set that aside. Making space. Mm. I can smell the parmesan even though I have a cold. <laughs> Pour on it. Put it back in. So that's the grated mixed cheese. You don't need to buy pre-made mixes. You can get exactly what you're looking for. Again, it's good. I don't have to think too much. I can just throw the water in and watch the scales go up. I can promise you this is water and not gin. I just think that the bottle is really pretty, so why not? Why not reuse it? <laughs> also going to clean my bowl a little bit after the cheese it's going to go for 10 minutes so I'll turn you guys off but after I'll be able to um, continue on and show you how we'll cook the macaroni and the vegetables for our pasta bake going from there but the breaks are good anyway I mean what you missed whilst the camera was off was uh, a nappy change for the uh, 18 month old and basically being able to clean up the kitchen as well so certainly what works um, for me here but obviously you can mix that up if you've got a different one place Varoma into position 
So we'll put the lid back on. Take the measuring cup off. Too many things shoved in two small cupboards. Firm a dish and the broccoli. There are so many recipes as well for the Varuma specifically. It allows you to really bulk out a meal. I mean, the bowl itself is 2.2 litres, but when you combine it with everything you can fit in the Varuma, you can easily cook for um, cook for a big family, groups of families of six, etc. So, we'll hit go on this. This is going to take another eight minutes to steam this, so I'll let the camera turn off again, and I'll see you guys in... Eight minutes. Okay, so it's still going. I don't know if you can quite see, but there is a heap of steam coming out the top. Um, it's on a tight temperature for Varoma, cooking that broccoli. So in five seconds, it'll give a ding. I don't normally probably actually come back and wait for it to stand like this. I will happily go about um, doing jobs in the house, etc., and then wait for it to send the alarm, which is good. It means I don't have to stand in the kitchen. Okay. It's done. Hit next. Transfer broccoli and pasta to a thermal serving bowl. So be careful with this because it is hot. But I will show you broccoli. So that's all cooked perfectly. And I'm gonna move that over behind. Can't actually see, but that's the kitchen sink behind the camera. And then this. I'll show you. I'll drain this. This is the pasta. So you can use your varoma, which is what I was just cooking the broccoli, to strain the pasta. Which is I'll show you. So yeah, basically, I just tipped everything that was just in the, the jug there into the varoma and drain it out of the water without losing any of my tiny macaroni. Okay, next, clean and dry the mixing bowl and turn the oven on. Alright, so, look at one. Noting that it actually only contained some cheese and all good things. Okay, put our butter in, 12, that's pretty close to 10, one tablespoon of plain flour. So just to clarify, I'm going to put the broccoli and the pasta all in the thermal server. I'm just setting that aside now to make the cheese sauce. One tablespoon of plain flour. 100 grams of milk. I used to hate making any creamy, cheesy, bechamel sauce because I personally <laughs> struggled with making sure that I'd always cooked my flour and making sure that I had added enough milk or not enough and not needing to stand there and stir it. The whole thing I didn't enjoy. But, oh, probably not a whole quad teaspoon or so a pinch of nutmeg. Uh, whereas now, I make it all the time and I know it'll always work because it's just the accuracy of the machine. It doesn't allow me and my tired adult self to, um, you know, muck it up. I'm choosing not to add the salt because I've already put salt and butter in, so I'm happy with that. Insert the measuring cup into the lid. And we're going to go for six minutes whilst it makes the perfect bechamel cheese sauce. Okay, final stages here. Um, adding the 70 grams of reserve grated cheese that we made earlier on. Oh, just to show you, sorry. Basically, oh, a bit hard to see. There's the sauce. 
And like I said, I paid no attention to it. Whilst I did that, I just went actually and was doing some work on the computer. So once I heard the timer, I was able to come back, but it is an excellent way to make time efficient activities. All right, 70 grams of that. Insert the measuring cup. And one minute. Whilst it melts all that cheese on. Okay, well, I've got my broccoli here ready. It's a bit noisy. We've got the dishwasher and the washing machine and the thermomix all going, so. And of course everyone's playing in the background too with their trains. what I actually made this morning as well after breakfast so don't want to have a, a drop but basically that's a lemon delicious it's also from the simply delicious cookbook which is this one's promo gift book but yeah so I'm playing this for lemon pudding for dessert after classic meatloaf which will go in next after the um, bake and obviously the science, so I'd reserve broccoli and pasta. Can do. Oh, 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 oh. I'm losing a little bit of macaroni in the back. Where did they go? There we go. Come on. Insert measuring. going to mix it up. So the machines managed to do, all in the space of a pretty small period of time, cook the pasta, cook the broccoli, cook the sauce, grate the cheese, um, and like I said, for me the biggest one is the sauce. But to be able to do it all and only have the one dirty bowl to wash up at the end, pretty happy. So now we're going to, actually what I might do, just so that you can keep watching, otherwise you can't really see. Cheese is on everything. Oh, it's so cheesy. Just so you can see. That looks so good. I think this may even have. Oh, my glasses are foggy. May even have number two eating the broccoli. Number one loves his little trees. Number two. Not so convinced. Alright. But that's in there, I'll hit next. And basically there you're going to put that into the grill. I think I'm going to change my plates because that one's a bit small for this big tray. It's only a side dish. But yeah, that's basically it. If you've got any questions, let me know. And thank you for watching. Okay, so there you have our side dish of the um, macaroni and three cheese pasta bake. So that just, after um, the video finished, Alex just put it under the grill for five minutes so that it all baked up nicely. Um, okay, so we are gonna go to Yolanda's because her tomato tart is ready. So let me just find you her for you. Okay, so. 22 minutes and my tart is baked. It looks really delicious. Can you see? It's steaming, it's browned. The only thing to do now is just to decorate a little bit. So I'm hoping that won't fall down if I put it there. Maybe I'll just have to decorate it and then show you. We're just gonna pop a few freshly um, chopped tomatoes on. So we've got some baked into the cheese mixture with the shallots. And now we're going to put a few on top just as a decoration. And then a few bits of rocket, and you could use baby spinach if you wanted. 
and then a little bit of um, chopped chives as well. And we drizzle it with either some bin cotto or some caramelised balsamic vinegar. And then you've got an awesome fresh tomato tart to impress whoever. Okay, I'm just going to, normally I'll make the caramelised balsamic vinegar myself in the thermi, but you really need the window open when you do that. But this time I've got like a gourmet one from the Blue Mountains. I'm a bit like Jen, I like to support the local businesses if I'm out traveling. So just a drizzle, you don't want too much, just enough to make it a bit special. So I'll hold it up and you'll be able to see the finished thing. It was really easy. Took just a couple of minutes to put together and 22 minutes to bake. So I reckon anyone could do that. And trust me, it tastes delicious. I wish you could try it. And it looks very impressive too. If you've got guests, Yolanda. That's what I love about the Thermo Mix. I can really quickly put together a dough or a filling and produce something that's got a wow factor. And people think you're a superstar in the kitchen, even if you're not. It's so cool. I love it. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. You make it look easy. So we can all copy you now. Yes. Um, all right, uh, Jen, how are you going? Is your, are yours done? Not yet. You want me to do this dressing? Yes, okay, Yolanda, you can do your dressing next. Sorry, okay. everyone, we're just figuring out the timing of everyone's dishes. This one is really, really quick to make and I've got everything ready. Um, this is a really good immune boosting dressing. We make it summer and winter. And what I love about it is that it's a bit citrusy, it's a little bit sweet, it's a bit nutty, it's a little bit salty. It's got some ingredients in there that are going to help you really boost your immune system to keep colds and flus away. You can make it fast and you can dollop it on a green salad, roasted vegetables or on roasted meat. Any of those things, it goes well on all of them. Um, Laura and I, we both make this pretty regularly because <laughs> um, we love it. So the ingredients are simple. It's tahini and some white miso paste, some orange juice, some lemon juice, and a little bit of maple syrup. And we just blitz it up in the thermi till it's creamy. So you've got the, the good vitamin C from your lemon and your citrus for your orange. You've got some zinc from your tahini. You've got some lovely um, good gut bacteria from the fermented miso paste, which you can just buy at Coles. Um, I buy it keeps for months and months and months, just like that, white miso. So really, really good fermented foods and um, yeah, a little bit of maple syrup. So the recipe is going to be given to you. Um, I've given it to Laura, but it comes from this book. It's called Fuel Cookbook. Um, I wrote it, so I like the recipe. Anyway, if you want to know more about it, just give me a yell. In the meantime, we'll pop everything in. So we want about 100 grams of orange juice. So it's pretty much one fresh orange. So we just pop that in. I'm a little bit over, but I'm not worried about it. Then I want only about 10 grams of lemon juice. I want it more sweet than sour. If you didn't have lemon juice, you could use lime if you wanted to. They're all in season at the moment. So a little bit over, that's okay as well. Not worried about that. And then I want about probably 20 grams of maple syrup. I don't want a lot. It's about, I don't know, a tablespoon roughly. Just enough to balance the saltiness in the miso. And then tahini, I want 100 grams of tahini. I tend to use the, um, the whole one. It's up to you what you like to buy, but that's just what I have in my house. Super good for you. I love things that are nutritious and great for your body, but like taste awesome as well. And that's pretty much what Fuel Cookbook was all about. It was about recipes that were going to fuel your body well, but were going to taste good, be fast to make. And you could do them in the thermi or you could do them conventional cooking. All right, last thing to go in there now is just some miso paste. It does tend to discolour a bit with age. This one's still nice and light and fresh. You can see it's like a sort of a creamy yellowy colour, I guess. So that's going to go in there. I want about 45 grams. So there's about half what I need. There's the 45 grams. All we've got to do now is pop our thermi lid on. 
and just give it about 10 seconds on speed six just to blend it. Like really, it's not critical how long or what speed, but 10 seconds speed six is pretty good. And I'll just give it a quick scrape down and just blend it just a little more. It's nice and creamy, it dollops well, keeps nicely in the refrigerator for oh, about a week. It does tend to thicken a bit in the fridge, but that's okay. So just maybe another, I don't know, couple of seconds. Maybe speed six again. Get it off the lid so I don't make too much mess. Okay, so when I've blended it, it's just super creamy like that, like a straw coloured and super creamy. Makes quite a decent volume and it's quite spoonable. Hopefully, you can see. As I said, it does thicken, but I would just dollop that on roasted meat or onto a salad. It thickens with time. Um, we have it quite regularly, as I said. Enjoy. Thanks, Yolanda. I like to do it on even just steamed veggies as well, if you want to yeah. jazz up some steamed veggies. Um, cool. So my turn now to show you some dishes. I am going to show you, Jen showed a really naughty version of a nice wintry drink, and I'm going to show you a healthy version of a wintry drink, which is our lemon ginger turmeric tea. And I'm going to move the camera down here. Excuse me while I... Do that because I want to show you how it cooks. So I'm just going to press start. Now the first half of this recipe is making a paste and I, I make this and have it in the freezer because it makes a lot and then you only need a little bit each time you're making the tea. It doesn't look pretty. I will admit that to you. But um, you know Jen was already telling you the benefits of ginger and um, Turmeric is great as well for anti-inflammatory, antioxidants, um, great um, medicinal properties. So I'm skipping through the paste section. Okay, so now I'm on to the tea and it's asking for uh, half a lemon, just the flesh only, and a knob of ginger. So I'm just gonna put that in. And it's telling me to put the lid on. And chopping for five seconds. Okay, I'm going to show you. Hello, today I wanted to show you how you can do a really cool trick in your Thermomix by steaming your bread rolls in the Varoma while you're cooking a soup below. And I'm gonna use, um, today I'm gonna use the spiced Moroccan lentil soup as my example soup. You can do this with any soup. So I am going to turn the camera over to our Thermomix so that you can see what I'm doing along the way. So I'm gonna press start cooking. I have an onion here, just one whole brown onion going in. Press next. It asks you for the lid. Always tells you to put your lid on. It won't work without that. And it's telling me to turn to speed five for three seconds. Okay, I'm gonna press next. And show you what we have here. Beautiful onions chopped perfectly. Now it's telling me to scrape down, so I'll just quickly give it a quick scrape. All right, carrying on here. Adding some oil. Oh, I was holding the Thermomix. Now, something I love about the Thermomix are the scales, because you can weigh in one gram increments. Just grab your ingredients straight out of the pantry and pour in. So you can see it going up there. 
it's slow. It's um, I have a very slow olive oil drizzler, so it takes a few seconds. That's okay. I just have one of those kind, so that's what I use. Pop the lid off. Press next, and we are going. So as you can see, this says that we've got three minutes while the onion sautés. I'm gonna show you a little trick here of what I do in that three minutes so I can multitask. Press these three dots and come here to, I need you to be able to see it. Yes, recipe detail. And you can go back and have a look at what's next. So I can go to my pantry and grab these next ingredients while my onion is sautéing. So I think that is pretty cool. So I have already done that today. I'll show you, I've got all my spices here. So they're going to go in next. But what I can do in this time is get my bread rolls ready. So I have my dough that's been rising here in my thermo mat. So I did this about an hour ago. I made this dough. And I just followed the basic bread recipe from the basic cookbook. So I milled some wheat grain first and then added in, it's only five main ingredients, your water, yeast, oil, salt, and your flour. And your flour can be any ratio of, it can just be 100% white or it can be a mixture of wholemeal, um, or milled, milled grains, whatever you want. So I am just um, getting the dough off my thermometer here. It's, um, as you can see, my dough is a bit sticky but the mat is one stick, so it does peel off quite nicely. Okay, so I am going to roll my rolls into little balls and place them in my Varoma. Before I do that, I'll just oil my Varoma a little. Just with a little bit of olive oil, spread that around everywhere. Oh, that's not enough. Um, I have done this without bothering to oil and it worked fine, but I thought I'd follow the recipe today. This is um, a tip I got many years ago from a quirky cookie and um, I can share that link with you where she shares the tips on how to do this. But basically it's just, she says to do 10 rolls, um, it wouldn't matter how many you did. It's just to get some little rolls. So really roughly portioning out here. And I will, yep, that looks good. And I'm just, I'm really rustic. Um, you can make them look perfect if you want, but I don't. I just roll it up and put it in the Varoma. So some might be a little bit bigger than others. And that is okay as well. I'm just going to do four down the bottom. You, know what? you can do them all up the top as well if you want. Um, they probably would all fit in a tray. But it doesn't actually matter. So this is really cool. You don't need to turn on the oven while you are um, wanting rolls to go with your soup. And if you, they end up the texture ends up being soft, um, as you can imagine being steamed. Once they cool for a minute or two, they actually, the outside does slightly go a bit harder. But if you want them to be crispy, you could just put them under the grill for a minute. Um, but to dip in soup, soft is great. Like, um, it's not what you're used to, but if you think about the fact that you're just dipping it in your soup anyway, it's quite good. Um, so there's my rolls ready. I'll set that aside and carry on with this recipe, get my mat out of the way. So now we'll just carry on with the rest of this recipe. So it's telling me to press next. So basically the onion has just been sauteing in there. Um, and now it's asking me to add all the spices. I've got them all in this bowl. So it's um, ginger, coriander, cumin, uh, paprika, pepper, Cinnamon, turmeric, chili powder, and nutmeg. I'm pretty sure that's the last one. Yeah. And if you don't like 
one of those spices. I don't have one. It's okay to leave one out. I have left out the chili tonight. There is enough spice in all the rest of them to add a really great depth of flavor. But if you do put them all in, the flavor is amazing. It just creates like all these layers. Um, so that is to mix for another one minute. And then it's adding the rest of the ingredients and it cooks for 20 minutes. So this is the type of soup that's really um, super quick and easy as long as you have the ingredients. And everything um, is just from the pantry because I'm going to use tinned tomatoes. The spices are from the pantry and then um, the lentils as well, which I don't use lentils very often in cooking, but I always have a bag in the pantry ready to go for when I want to make something. Um, the dal is really good as well from the basic cookbook. So um, that recipe and this one are probably the only two lentil recipes I've done, but um, that's probably just me. So the other thing I want to show you, which is awesome, is our vegetable stock paste. This is something you make in your Thermomix. It's just vegetables, herbs, salt, and a bit of oil. And it makes a container like that big, um, probably just, just under a litre worth and you can keep it in the fridge or freezer for months and each time you need to make something that has stock in it you just grab a spoon out and it just flavours your recipe so nicely um, but then you know because you've made the stock 100% of your meal is homemade by you which is just awesome for anyone who cares about additives. I'm just going to show you um, hopefully you can see but just how those spices have mixed in really nicely with the onion um, so it's asking me now it's asking me now for some water so I just pour that in it's always good to slow down when you get close because the scales do catch up a bit There we go, that'll do, so I don't want to go over. Um, it's asking me now for the stock paste, which I just explained about. Yum, yum, yum. And you can vary the vegetables that go in that as well, which is another great thing about it. And just the lentils going in. These are red split lentils, so they cook really fast. There's no need to soak these ahead of time. So, yep, 100 grams of that. Oh, and in go our tomatoes. So I am just using canned. If you wanted to, you could use um, fresh if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. Doesn't matter. I didn't have those pre opened. Okay, so that's going in. Asks for the lid. Now, this time it says to insert the measuring cup and to cook for 20 minutes. Um, 100 degrees reverse, speed one. I will get that going, but remember we wanted to steam our rolls. So I'm actually taking off my measure cup here. And I'm going to sit the Varoma just on top, remembering to add our Varoma lid. So I'm gonna pause the recording now and in 20 minutes I'll come back and show you we have yummy healthy soup ready for a cold winter's night um, with some steamed rolls to dip in. Okay, um, the soup is pretty well ready it's about to time and I want to show you the rolls I'm excited to show you you have to bear in mind they don't look like oven baked rolls because they're not oven baked rolls but when you're taking the lid off the Varoma just be careful to I want you to see this okay just be careful to um, usually you're in front of it so if I move it this way it's in front of me I just open it this way so that the water and the steam, like well, not water, the steam doesn't go in my face, but so that the water doesn't go on the rolls. So I'm going to do it quite quickly like this. Yeah, see that? And if you put that upside down on your bench, then you can place your Varoma down like that. Now the soup, 
is looking good. So I'm going to pour the soup into my thermo server. This is our double insulated stainless steel bowl that keeps our food hot for a few hours. So it's really awesome. That's one of our host reward options. Um, but I've got our soup here ready. You can see it's like, I don't want to pour it obviously on the computer, but I wanted to show you the, the volume. If I pour that onto my spatula, it's not going to splatter everywhere when I pour that in. Minimal anyway. Looking good. So that's our soup. Beautiful. You can't even, <laughs> you can't even see it. I'm going to like pour that down there. There you go. Um, Moroccan, spiced Moroccan lentil soup. And if I pour myself some of that soup, I'll get two scoops. Then I would just top it with some coriander, fresh coriander. Um, yes. So that you've got some nice herbs um, on there. I'll show you that in a second. But I want to show you these rolls. I'm going to just point the camera down. Oh, yeah, so you can see the soup. Lovely. Now, these rolls, um, I just, before, I, before the 20 minutes ended, I did just poke in and make sure they were cooked properly and that's one of the tips so I already I'm just gonna use my tongs I already pulled about one but I'm gonna pull apart this one so you can see you see that I just pulled apart really nicely and you can see the inside texture is nice and fluffy and soft um, so I put that on my plate I do want to show you the texture on the inside if I can find a knife um, they are hot, so I need to be careful. And already, it's only been a minute, like by the time I've poured out my soup, already the outside of the rolls has, um, they're, st they're still soft, they're not crispy, but it's, um, it's not doughy, it's like nice and you can see the inside texture there. Um, it just kind of pulled apart nicely like a nice roll ready to dip into our soup okay, so thanks for watching i hope that was helpful i think it's really awesome to steam rolls without having to turn the oven on especially if you're already having soup for dinner anyway